Hi, everybody. This is a September-October demo debate um, on the Baltics NATO topic. Uh, this will be a flow round, um, so, so debaters will be speaking uh, more quickly. Quickly, uh, The first speaker on the affirmative team will be Srikar Sa uh, Satish. Uh, the second speaker is Alex Watson. Um, and on the negative, speaking second, um, speaking first will be Tejas Balaji. And speaking second, it will be Conrad Pallor. So with that said, let's take it away. Advantage one is infrastructure. Right now, Thomas 20 notes that presently the Baltic states infrastructure not adequate for economic or military needs. Jim is this overall security. Thankfully, troops of the Baltic states are the two ways of the British deploying troops. TBD 20 explains that to deter Russia aggression against the Baltic major investments need to be made in infrastructure to accelerate development of NATO forces. This comes from the form of dual port use, roads, military tanks, ETC. Second is investment. Darion 07 notes that in regards to infrastructure investments, U.S. troops station in host countries, credibility, signal investment stability because signal positive relationships and possibly alliances with the U.S. and host countries that spill over to further investor climate. This is important because a weak infrastructure leads to extinction. It's try or die. Armstrong 15 notes that a small disruption causes a highly nonlinear effect because water transportation, fuel, power are strongly coupled and thus triggers the start of a failure to cascade secondary events such as conflict starvation, causes a great depth of suffering. This risk collapse and spreads, uh, which undermine possibilities of combating ecosystem collapse, loss of trade, poverty, wars, and climate change. Advantage to is alliances. Our alliances are weak. Dalder 21 nines that the U.S. allies face growing uncertainty about the long term viability of alliances with the United States to begin to assess the possibility of alternative security arrangements. Thankfully, Kuhn 18 notes that it forces three Baltic states to address this uh, to concerns that some of the nations might lack resolve in the event of a Russian attack. In doing so, NATO would strengthen assurance by heeding calls to the Baltics for U.S. boots on the ground. Scenario one is bioweapons. Right now, bioweapons are the proliferation dorm, as Gen 14 notes. In comparison to nuclear weapons, biological weapons are easier to make, less costly. Governments without want to strengthen the military are likely to choose bioweapons. Most developing nations already know how to prepare it for weapons. Indeed, NTI finds that 16 countries plus Taiwan have or currently suspected of having biological weapons. Any of these weapons are never fired. Mother Jones notes the chance of a disease outbreak is at 70% for a high security lab being completed in Kansas, meaning that all we have to do is increased bioweapons. This is important because Millet 17 finds the bioweapons could threaten human existence, risk jeopardizing existing of all future generations. Disease has been responsible for the greatest tools of humanity and biotechnology, which might be the creation of disease that compact traits experiments, result in viruses, and enhance transmissibility, lethability, and ability to overcome therapeutics. Scenario two is CCP. Sing 20 notes the disease personal imposition is to become another Mao, rooting out any opposition. But DSOC must protect itself as the undefeated leader, global leader in the eyes of the people. To achieve this, DSO has embarked a strategy to challenge the US instead of focusing on China's economy and COVID. Uh, Unless we affirm, Rap, uh, Rap Hooper 20 finds that instead of China has sought to corrode U.S. alliances, leaders have attempted to undermine security guarantees to demonstrate U.S. ability to protect them in waning. After years of huge military research, uh, Z has set his rights to reestablish that China as a great power. Indeed, Chem 19 notes that too much control in Z's hand has contributed to economic st stagnation. Z's prediction for state control has starved off the private sector of capital. Z's consolidation of power raised suspicions about enterprises, and the deep penetration of the party in Chinese business caused Chinese companies to be viewed as extended arms of the Communist Party. This increases emissions. As Chair 20 finds that we find that trade liberalization from Lowering the input and output of tariffs of China's accession to the WTO significantly reduced the intensity of emissions. Liberalization improves its manufacturing firms' environmental performance and offers new insights to dynamics on how firms practice relate to their opportunities and market competitions opened up by more milestones of trade liberalization. Advantage three sea mines. Currently, Russia is deploying naval mines of the Baltic Sea. MSD 21 finds that new weapons for Baltic regions include a new generation of sea mines that have already been deployed. Increasing NATO's minesweeping is crucial. Shut 19 finds that increasing the reconnaissance and maritime patrolling of missions of the Baltic Sea could, area could increase NATO's data and prevent Russia from planting sea mines in the area. This is crucial. Naval mines risk oil spills. Empirically, Yemen, Lundquist 20 finds that tanker damage a mine severely uh, suffered significant damage resulting in an oil spill. Tragically, Shutz 16 finds a diversity loss risk extinction because all life is independent and ecosystems cannot be recreated by humans. Advantage four is whaling. Nine different finds of destructive fishing policies like bottom following high levels of catch, illegal and regulated unreported UII fishing, all led to the degradation of marine habitats in the Baltic Sea. Thankfully, NATO could patrol troops uh, as NATO Review 15 finds that assessing the concerns about overfishing the region open up more water has become reachable. The United States and NATO allies have been responding to these activities on many fronts. This was like patrolling with troops, policing the waters. This is important because News Press 9 finds that overfishing is one of the main reasons behind the current state of a marine environment. Overfishing is a single biggest immediate issue to our oceans, cross by biodiversity at the top. Uh, under view, use magnitude has probability determined impacts its real world. Anything else just justify 100 probability of stopping a person from sneezing. And nuclear will never cause extinction. Site 06. Smoke clouds don't cause laws enough for spreading the globe. Droplets uh, remove them in matters of days to weeks. Now. We negate. Contention one is Russia. Multipolarity is inevitable in the status quo due to U.S. imperial overstretch and the rise of Asian powers has led to the decline of the United States and the rise of other actors. The status quo is a soft landing towards a multilateral, multipolar system. Marchetti 17. Trump marks the end of American world hegemony. Afghanistan and Iraq have impacted negatively on the U.S. government. China is rising fast and challenging U.S. leadership in economic, political, and military terms. India and China are closing the gap. This might have a de-escalating consequence in terms of world tensions. Without a hegemonic power, a balanced system might 
emerge and new competition might escalate into conflicts or the opening of new channels of dialogue. It will be up to leaders to steer the way. Unfortunately, the affirmative clings to hegemony, ensuring violent transitional wars and undermining global cooperation. This happens in two ways. First is encircling Russia. Russia is a de defensive realist, meaning any intervention in the status quo is unlikely. Only NATO expansionism triggers war. Grant 19. Russia is not particularly concerned about the Baltics from an ideological perspective. Moscow is much more apprehensive that NATO is building up its military presence within Russian sphere of interest. Second, undermining other solutions. US-led NATO trades off with alternative approaches to moderate Russian amb ambitions, spheres of influence, buffer zones, and diplomacy. Schrefensen 20. NATO enlargement limits U.S. flexibility with Russia. Historically, in the 90s onward, NATO enlargement was likely to be uniquely harmful to Russian policymakers arguing for cooperation. Enlargement limits flexibility in dealing with Russia, hindering the U.S.'s ability to explore options such as spheres of influences or buffer zones in Eastern Europe that might potentially dampen bilateral tensions. Policy options that might ameliorate tensions with Russia are screened out of the policy agenda. The impact is war with Russia. Beeble 19 finds that Russia is ready to gradually increase tensions responding to the imperialistic actions of NATO in the US. Russia will escalate to challenge NATO. Russia informed the West with unmistaken clarity they view Baltic membership in NATO as a red line that should not be crossed and they will consider NATO expansion into that region as a direct threat to Russia's vital national interests. This goes nuclear. Brands 19 finds that NATO-Russia war could go nuclear if Russia escalates to preserve the gains it won early in the conflict. Even limited use of nuclear weapons raises the question of further escalation and apocalyptic destruction. Contention to is European self-defense. In the status quo, European countries have increased their defense spending due to the uncertainty of United States long-term commitments to Europe under former President Trump. Read 19 explains that European defense spending will surpass $300 billion a year by 2021. Trump criticized NATO member for not spending enough on defense. This stance is likely to continue under the Biden administration with top think tanks pushing for Biden to pressure EU military advancements. Herzog 21 finds that think tanks like the Center for American Progress with closed ties to the Biden administration reported that Biden encourages EU to develop hard power military capabilities. Unfortunately, a firm reverses the trend. Increasing troop commitments to the Baltics reinforces American security commitments to the region and allows Europe to free ride. Burtonbach 17 finds that raising European defense spending will require convincing finance ministers of the new realities of European geopolitics. European countries have been slower to build when American defense spending rises. Europeans are reluctant to spend on defense because they can and do not see utility in doing it differently. Having sat under the American umbrella for so long, European publics are less inclined to believe in the risk of rain. They tend to be more suspicious of the umbrella and they're afraid of getting wet. The impact is EU self-defense is twofold. First is reinvigorating the EU economy. The EU's economy is suffering due to COVID. Cooper 21 finds that due to the bureaucratic disasters and widespread anti-vaccine paranoia, many EU countries have been forced back into partial lockdowns and the region's economy is suffering and they're technically in recession once more. However, increased EU defense spending boosts their economies in the long term. Kington 21 finds that with many high-tech jobs in the defense industry, specific support for the sector will be needed to mitigate the economic crisis and preserve the long term of the future. In fact, Fieldstein 8 finds that a 5% increase in military spending and an additional $10 billion could create 300,000 jobs. Second is solving Russian aggression. Blackford 20 finds that Russia is using the Baltics to test credibility of the NATO alliance and NATO's enhanced forward presence provides short-term reassurance and uh, overlooks lessons of the Cold War in West, West Germany, played a vital role in the credibility of NATO's de de deterrence posture. Reluctance of Germany to think seriously about the military security of Europe is becoming a hindrance to NATO's deterrence capabilities. And NATO's defense commitments asymmetry dooms a Article 5 credibility. Deterrence is based on the believability of a European, not American response to aggression. Only European self-defense triggers Article 5. Gopal in 18. Article 5 provision is not strong. While NATO might provide limited deterrence against Russian adventurism, it's largely predicated on impacting U.S. self-interest. Russia knows that the Germans and French are unlikely to sacrifice their troops and go to war if Russia acts aggressively. For those reasons, my partner and I strongly urge a vote for the negative. Cool, you ready for Frost? Yeah. Yeah, you can have the first question. No, you can have it. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. I, like, forgot that I one second. <laughs> okay, uh, time starts now. All right, so let's talk about this like overfishing argument about whaling. So sure. when does NATO usually do patrolling specifically for whaling? Like in what regions and how successful are they usually? Sure, uh, we can give you an example of Nigeria, right? There was a bunch of like patrolling for piracy. Our argument is it saying that NATO is going to have like a new force that's only for overfishing. We're seeing like these patrols that are going around like the Navy and stuff. They could catch illegal overfishers and NATO has mentioned that they want to stop overfishing. Has, so they'll probably- Has that ever happened before? Yeah, for example, in piracy in Nigeria, right? I can't give you an so example. Piracy over and wait, wait, wait. whaling is different, though. Yeah, I can't give you an example on whaling. Well, not whaling, overfishing, right? Uh, okay. Because, like, you know, places NATO has also been hasn't had like such a drastic overfishing problem, right? How but much the Baltics has is uniquely gone down in Nigeria. 
dude, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter for I mean, it does matter because it's indicative of whether or not NATO is successful. I mean, I guess because- Last time I checked, piracy was actually increasing in those regions. Well, piracy hasn't had a significant impact. For example, you know, we both debate, we both were the same case TOC topic. We saw one piracy attack destroys the economy. We haven't seen one piracy attack, like a major piracy attack in a very long time because- I don't think any of that evidence- Can we move on to something else? I don't think one piracy attack will ever destroy the economy. I'm simply asking how successful has NATO been in the past in terms of combating piracy? When extremely fact, successful right impact. we haven't seen we haven't seen a major pirate attack in a very long time can i have a question though now that's not true but sure you can have a question sure let's talk about your goplan evidence uh, in like your bottom of your like c2 uh, it specifically talks uh, and you say like about how there's germany and france they won't be willing to commit troops so why will like agrogenous like eu like domestic like why would they change that at all like they know that these big economies are not going to be attacking them no matter what right what do you mean i'm confused so there's these big, actually, I'll ask a different question. That's kind of dumb. Uh, you talk about your specifically your uh, econ impact, right? Your econ impact, you say that this creates a bunch of these high tech jobs and especially with COVID, that's like pretty important, right? Sure. So why would they stop? Like if, if we all know that this is going to create a bunch of high tech jobs that keep like moving forward, why would the EU just be like, let me just well, not do this? We, we, we answered this already, right? In case like European defense ministers don't want to increase defense spending because the publics in Europe don't want to increase defense. So spending. who specifically? Like which ministers the public, said that? The people who vote these people into office because they've been sitting under the I mean, American umbrella for like, so long, they see increased defense spending as a bad thing. They're more wait, afraid I of- I think that's kind of count. Like for example, in Germany, right? Germany has been doing a lot of like increased defense yeah, spending. We haven't seen any like backlash against Germany. Because we're advocating for the status quo. They're doing it now because our case is true, but usually the public doesn't like it. The reason that's, why they're doing it now is because they view it as that they need to because they're uncertain of American commitments, which I'm Wait, that doesn't sure really answer the question, right? There's case. no, I mean like that doesn't really answer the question, right? That public doesn't, isn't- That does answer the question. Your, your question was, why would e European defense ministers not increase spending? My answer no, that's is, not, that's not the question. speaking, based on data, European publics don't want to increase defense spending unless they feel that America isn't protecting them, which is true in the that's status time. quo, which we both agree on. That's time. All right. Anyone not ready? Okay. Group both their links on Russia. They're both predicated on the idea that um, like one, tensions are going down now, and that two, there's other options to like doing stuff with Russia other than military escalation like diplomacy. However, that's not true because O'Connor literally two weeks ago, which is the most piece of, recent piece of evidence on this question, finds that there are new exercises being conducted upon Russians in Western border with uh, with China. This means that all of their evidence saying that like tensions are going down right now, Russia's a defensive realist, and that they're willing to do diplomacy are total BS because they're not a defensive realist. They're aggressing right now, and they're doing it with China, which links into our um, um, she scenario and our contention too, which means you should be voting uh, app on a risk of offense. With that being said, several turns on their case. First, uh, several reasons why AF solves their case. Uh, these are turns. First is deterrence. Russia has a political incentive to attack now as well as 21 rights. The no for military answer from NATO's help fuel Kremlin confidence to carry out warfare abroad in neighboring countries and Putin's internal excursion meant to notify you that he cannot offer Russia a better economic future without reforms. This buildup is happening right now and it's not for training purposes. As Reuters NATO finds more than a thousand Russian troops from Moscow and Ukraine's border and annexing Crimea, the Russian military buildup was larger than 2014 is not for training purposes. Pac-21 finds that Russia is big in the Baltic is too weak and cannot defend themselves against Russian West West invasion. AF solves because when you put troops on the border, you have some deterrent to Russia as opposed to the literal none that is there right now. Also, our case tells you that infrastructure checks back and deters Russia and also the alliances check back and deter Russia. And that's important for preventing a lot of things. Second turn is liberal technocrats. Continued domestic discontent is driving deterrence to liberal elites by Putin. Saranova 20 finds that despite an, uh, despite an abiding predisposition to conservatism, Russia is going to modify itself to liberal technocrats or an expanding category of Putin's elite. Russia is a period of political change, and the goal is to head off a new domestic upheaval, the schism along the technocratic civilian elite and the conservative way into Western protectorates of the 20s begins only as some kind of a domestic crisis, but the populace refuses to keep faith within the existing system. The plan boosts Putin's popularity, and he takes credit. Anderson 16, weakening the alliances, forcing Russian foreign policy to fracture. NATO would boost Putin's popularity is having NATO reinforces a negative perception the Russians developed towards the alliance and Putin continues to fuel the fear of encroachment and pointed out that NATO's expansion is an affront to Russian honor. Liberal elite influence Saul's back for uh, Russia-Western relations as Frederick 17 finds that if elite groups develop a strong, uh, stronger power and the effect on the Russian foreign policy, they depend on which fraction to extend the Silviki dominant force response to Russia's adversarial uh, rise in liberal technocrats. This leads to a more cooperative approach with the rest and reduced conflict. 
Third turn is negotiations. Larkosa 20, deployments increasing uh, increased bargaining leverage and talks. Russia has no incentive to engage in such negotiations, whereas NATO has few concessions to make since its Eastern members will never agree. The negotiations turn specifically links to their diplomacy argument because it's the only way we actually have a means of doing diplomacy. Right now, we have no way, like no bargaining chip with which to do diplomacy. We'd say you have to have troops there to actually make their, uh, their sub point work in the first place. Go to their contention too. Firstly, on the idea that like EU self-defense is going to happen in the first place, it doesn't. It fails. The Economist 19 finds that institutional uh, institutional hurdles mean that the EU doesn't have military thing in their DNA. There would be gaps in capabilities in vital areas such as air to air refueling and intelligence surveillance. And reconnaissance gap filling could take 15 years to feel under threat. Your, uh, Europe is divided, and Russians would play their own game with the Greeks, Hungarians, and more. Establishing a purely European defense would overwhelm the Europeans politically, financially, and militarily. This means that their case fails, and they don't get any of their offense on econ and defense. In contrast. We would say the AF is the only way to solve because EU nations only started building up their military spending after being called out by the United States for not spending enough. Their own case concedes this, but I'm going to read more evidence on it anyway. Reuters finds that Europe and Canada are doing raising defense spending for the fastest pace in three years, aimed at showing the United States specifically that they're committed to shouldering more costs. Absent this pressure from the United States, they probably would not spend because France, who is a big actor in, the, in NATO, has continually pushed for negotiations over military spending in force and has advocated for ending sanctions. FBRI 2020, France is once again pushing for improved relations with Russia, French President Macron's effort to engage Russia's yielded little in the way of results, but he claims that sanctions aren't working. This is the only risk of solvency for their um like econ argument and their defense argument because without pressure from the United States, there's no actual way the military spending is going to increase because they themselves tell you that Europe doesn't want to increase it because they're public support and number leader support it, which means if you want any sort of access to their impacts, you vote AF. I'm going to take some uh, prep time to get on a call first. Can you just call me back? Okay, Josh, from the, the other one. I'll call. Shrieker, pick up the call. Uh, I did. Okay, one sec. My Chrome is being dumb. Give it an audio call instead of video call because it's not letting me pick up. All right, is everyone ready? So the order is going to be the negative case, starting with an overview. Uh, I'm going to answer the bottom card of the AC, the impact framing card, uh, at the end of the overview. Then I'll go down the neg case, and then I'll go to the app. The app. Wait, you've cut out for me. Can you repeat that one more time? Sorry. So the order is going to be starting with the negative case, um, in the order of impact framing. Um, I will then answer the last card of the AC, which was the impact card that whatever nuclear war doesn't cause extinction. Then I'll go down the neg. Then I'll go to the app. Sorry, one more time. What was the first thing? Uh, so it's going to be an overview on the negative case. Okay, overview, underview, neg AF. Yep. All right, let's begin. They have conceded the Marchetti 17 evidence that a peaceful transition to multipolarity is coming now under the Trump administration and transitioning to the Biden administration, attempting to retain hegemony and hold into adversaries and sparse a litany of conflicts. The impact outweighs the ace of point is magnitude. Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran are dissatisfied with U.S. institutions. Tensions are boiling and will result in direct confrontation with nuclear weapons. National ambitions and miscalculation. The beast point is time for a troop pullout in Afghanistan has hurt U.S. credibility and China's testing U.S. resolve through island building and drone skirmishes. Miscalculation and nationalist pressure sets a low threshold. They say nuclear war doesn't cause extinction. Nuclear war does cause extinction. Star 15 finds a nuclear war is not to be survived by the human species. A war would be mass extinction that ends human history. Leading climatologist tells us nuclear war threatens existence of species. Nuclear weapons would create an environment in which it would be too cold to grow food, radioactive fallout, a litany of other wars. On C1, they make a couple of responses. The first response they say is that tensions are going down the status quo. This does not answer the Niker 17 card. The Russia is a defensive realist. That means that even if tensions are going down the status quo, that proves that Russia has no incentive to invade in the status quo, which proves that all their arguments about how Russia is conducting military exercises is fundamentally distinct from Russia is invading in the Baltics. This is, is really important because the only risk of escalation is the status quo. The point we win uh, uniqueness, uniqueness controls the direction of the link. The second argument is undermining other solutions 
resolutions, they read uh, two other terms that how like Russia um, has a political incentive to attack and that Russia liberal technocrats will push for cooperation. Lump both those responses. They don't listen. A, a, a Putin is a defensive realist who's only going to expand if NATO encroaches on their sphere of influence. They have not once responded to that, that higher level thesis question. Also, they have mishandled the second a link to our argument, which specifically indicates there's other solutions to the problem. They say that Russia won't use diplomacy. That was not the only warrant. The Shriffordson 20 card also says that NATO enlargement leads to US, uh, prevents US flexibility, such as creating uh, borders and other sort of spheres of influence and buffer zones to Eastern Europe that will dampen bilateral tensions. Uh, go to their case. Start with your advantage one on infrastructure investment. The first argument is there's no internal leak evidence. Their impact evidence indicates that infrastructure attack causes existential collapse. They read no, no evidence that collapse are happening in the status quo or that attacks are happening. Second argument is linked to European defense spending solves back for their argument, which proves that our second contention solves. The third argument is that a multipolar system better resolves their contentions. On advantage two. First, no evidence right how ally commitments solve or reassures our allies, force them to read evidence specific on bioweapons. First, no solvency. You can't solve for bioweapons from Taiwan. You've read no evidence about how Asian allies care about what happens in the Baltic. Second argument is impact defense. No risk of bioweapons. Countries won't use them because their people will also be affected. Next, no impact. O'Neill 4 explains bioweapons do not cause mass destruction due to vaccines, social distancing, and quarantine. Prevents extinction. On uh, the second argument about Chinese collapse, at the point in which we win that there's this transition to a multipolar system, it proves that Chinese rise is inevitable. It's a question of whether or not we want a hard or soft transition. We say a soft transition is better and a lesser cooperation. Our evidence indicates that multipolarity is good for cooperation with China. Next on mining. First framing issue, must read solvency evidence for any contention read. Second, no internal link, read no card that oil spills hurt biodiversity. They read an impact card for biodiversity, but they don't say that oil spills cause biodiversity collapse. Next, no solvency evidence, no evidence increase that increasing defense commitments to the Baltic solve this problem. Next, non-unique, NATO 21 writes that NATO has already launched Operation Open Spirit in the status quo, which helped the 11 nations cleared mines in the Baltics. They have proven to be successful as an average operation neutralizes 100 mines. And overall, this coupled with other operations decreased mines in the sea by 20%. Next on overfishing, first framing issue, must read solvency evidence for any contention read. How does expanding defense presence solve for overfishing? Second, if NATO cared about whaling issues, they wouldn't have sent limited patrols. But right now, they have commented the issue. The third argument is John 20 finds that piracy literally increasing right now, meaning NATO is ineffective. The fourth argument is Hillborn 10 finds that fisheries and ocean collapses do not cause uh, uh, do not cause extinction because the environment is specifically able to resolve these, these concerns. And also, uh, our case is a prior question because a multi uh, a multipolar system that, uh, that allows for cooperation is better able to resolve issues of global significance, such as any environmental impact. Okay, we're good. That was another 110 news. So, Shriko, how much do we have left? Were you timing? Yeah, so it's 110 plus 20, which is 130, so about 130 left. Baller. Okay, Conrad, I'm good. Script to Conrad. Um, yeah, you're cool. good. Alrighty. Um, so let's talk about Diplo. So you say that like blah blah blah. Like the United States has like a lot of other options we can use, like border drawing and such. Are we using those right now? Uh, yeah. Like the Baltics is like a border. Where? Uh, border when? How? Border. Why? Explain. Yeah, I'll explain. So the the argument is that the Baltics is is perceived by Russia as a a buffer zone from other European countries. And so our argument is like uh, maintaining the buffer zone by just maintaining the status quo would allow that to happen. Also, okay, so how, how, does, how, how does the status quo like allow the Baltics to function as a buffer zone? Because right now NATO is not expanding to the same extent that it would be by the F. Like whatever the link differential is for you all is like the, is why the status so, quo. So why does that equal buffer zone? Because Russia does not perceive the NATO as encroaching upon their territory, which is why they haven't intervened. Um, All right, last follow-up. Does that change if Russia decides to like, Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, sure. Your argument for why Russia won't use diplomacy is that there's no bargaining chip. Are sanctions or other economic pressures not a bargaining chip? Evidently, no, because we've had sanctions on Russia for like the past gajillion years and it's not solved anything. Going back to the buffer zone question, um, does the Baltics like existence as a buffer zone change if Russia decides to like invade and totally murk them? Um, 
Like, are they no longer a buffer zone if Russia just like goes in? Takes yeah, so I guess the problem with that is that we've won the top level thesis question that- so I get the top level thesis question. I'm asking like a hypothetical about the state of the Baltics as a buffer zone. If Russia invades- like divorced from the flow. If Russia invades the Baltics in this hypothetical world in which defensive realism isn't a thing, yeah. they, that not, I, what's the question? Is that- so, so are the Baltics still a buffer zone if they get taken over by Russia? Well, apparently not. Okay, cool. You can get a question. Um, okay. So let me ask about the response to second contention, that uh, our second contention. So I say that uh, pressure is why these countries have increased military spending. Why do increasing defense commitments all of a sudden like maintain that pressure or decrease that pressure? I guess I'm a little confused about like the, what that response gets you. Uh, because of our alliances contention, we tell you that NATO is really weak right now. So the only way to like maintain pressure is to maintain the existence of like NATO and US um, NATO cooperation. Okay, but like if the argument is that when the US is scaling back, that is what pressured these countries into increasing their military spending? No, so it's not like the US is scaling back. It's it's when the United States is like a member of NATO and saying like, hey, NATO, please spend money. I know, but you had evidence that stipulates that the U.S. is scaling back in the status quo, which has caused increase in European defense commitments. Wait, you read that evidence or we read that evidence? We read evidence that indicates that. And also that, um, yeah, just that. Okay. Um, well, I guess like we're a little over time, but like our response to that would be that like they're not necessarily scaling back. They're just asking for ramped up pressure. And like the Alliance Lincoln still applies. Trigger, do you want to call? Uh, order's going to be, uh, Conrad, are you there? Bet. Okay. Uh, order's going to be on the, uh, the neg overview that was read. Uh, neg case, aft case. Is that good with everybody? Uh, it's on the overview, you can start on like the bottom part about like new four, like the cross applied to underview. Okay, so underview overview neg af. Sure, yeah, yeah, that, that's good, yeah. They read store, they read store, but they don't give a warrant. Our side's evidence is literally in that destroyed. It notes that the smallest of store use is like flawed because he could take these like acid rates going to be lasting forever. But what Sykes notes is that these won't last forever. And there's also remote island populations, which means that nuclear war will never lead to extinction. There's going to be enough of a population to survive. And two, Yegorov in the case also applies to the computer model scholar use are really, really bad because it doesn't talk about how the rains could be washing away the acid, which means nuclear war will never lead to extinction. But on the overview, we say that you should weigh climate change over everything else. A is a prerequisite. Climate change leads to more food wars, which A leads to a more hard transition because that's more into, uh, there's more interventions between like Russia and China and also elsewhere, but also two at least for more nuclear wars. So like climate change comes for a second to be time frame. A nuclear war initiation is going to take way too long as far as the second strike capabilities and everything. But climate change is like immediate threat and on urgency. It's going to be uh, plant finding every impact. And finally, probability. Under the meta wave, we agree that extinction comes first, but probability of uh, extinction first probably outweigh. We have a 100% probability because all the responses to both the sheet or liberal technocrats and the other turn I'm going for has been conceded, which means that we have 100 probably of our scenario. Let's line by line their framing. The first thing they say is magnitude. Well, extinction is also 100% magnitude. It doesn't matter about Iran and anything else, which is why it's really easy. The second thing they say is time frame. No, climate change is going to be making the time frame even shorter, which is why climate change comes first. Let's go to the next case. Done on the O'Connor turn, they just say like, oh, tensions are decreasing. No, that's not the turn. Our turn is saying tensions are increasing because Russia and China are doing these exercises together. Two implications. A, it means it turns their entire thesis about multipolarity because hard transitions are occurring right now where Russia and China are doing exercises together, making a bunch of hard transitions. A means risk of solidity flows out, but also two, this also means that, uh, that Russia is an offensive realist. They're trying to go and take over the entire world. That's the O'Connor evidence. All, they group all three responses by saying like Putin's a defensive realist. That is not response to liberal technocrats because liberal technocrats influences Putin's decision. Let's extend it because it's conceded. What we say right now is uh, right now uh, liberal technocrats are losing control in the Putin's parliament because uh, Putin's going to the NATO and saying like, hey, we win, we kick NATO out of the Baltics. But the problem is when you affirm this, go to, uh, when you affirm this puts it over, which means that liberal technocrats are trying to take control. Two implications: a, it turns case because the French government they go conceded to the root cause of why there's bad relations because uh, when you have like the Slovaki, which is going to be like the hard uh, alt right people in Putin's inner circle that go more towards escalation, which means we prerequisite their C one. 
also conceded, but also too, it's linked to the climate change because the uh, impacts we see on case says that the liberalization is key to be stopping climate change because emissions are lower when it comes to that issue than climate change is existential threat that uh, Wayne's already there. We're going to go for the diplomacy turn as well. It's been 100% conceded probability ways here. Judge Adventure is also here. Let's also 20 notes that what happens, you need to have a bargaining ship in order to have tensions. The problem is when you put troops in the Baltic, that acts as a bargaining ship. This A means you have better tension with Russia, which means better relations solves everything, but also too, it's a better thing to vote for climate change. Let's go to the a AC case. We can see all the defense on everything except for the uh, she response. They just say multipolarity is going to be hard. Well, multipolarity is going to be hard if she's going to be consolidating the entire problem. And so it's extend this because it doesn't interact at all. Right now, she's going to be going for, uh, sorry, one sec. Right now, she's, she's personally in the system, like going and showing empire, uh, the US empire is declining and trying to ruin alliances, which is why right now she's politics are going really high. However, when you're first, you're going to be making sure that she cannot do this and uh, cannot consolidate power. That's really important because she consolidation power is going to destroy liberalization. That's really important because liberalization is key to be solving for these emissions because liberalization could be showing people that the competition is better. It's going to be decreasing emissions on that. It's empirically proven. This is really important because climate change is a try or die scenario because everyone's going to literally melt. The Wang's also conceded at the top. All right. It's going to quickly start with the China argument um, and then I'll just sign post from there. Okay. okay, just like I, I have a really bad flowing. Is it just gonna signposting like down the neck and then off, or is it gonna like jump to the off right now? I have no idea. I just like kind of go, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. Um, time starts now. Let's start on their China argument. For them to win any argument, they need to be fully extending their argument in the summary. Schrieger did not do this. He didn't extend anything. He just says, oh, oh, China becomes more powerful. This causes extinction because why? How does China rising have anything to do with climate change? This was never extended. How does the Baltic states getting support have anything to do with China decreasing? This was a response that was never actually answered. They never prove why alliances forming actually decreases the rise in China's power. And there's no internal link extension as to why China increasing power has anything to do with the climate change at all. At that point, there's literally no way they have any link to extinction or they're winning the round. At that point, our argument is very simple. It's uh, it's the ch it's the multipolarity and the rise of multipolarity. It's inevitable. You're seeing that happen right now in the status quo with China increasing power and other countries like India also making way. So the difference is either you have multipolarity with peaceful transition or you have nuclear war. The reason why this nuclear war happens is because when you affirm, you are a increasing aggression with Russia. Russia is a defense realist actor. At that point, they're not going to aggress unless they've been aggressed against first. This is terrible because if we increase Baltic states, they're going to view this as pushing spears of influence into their region, which is why Russia will push to push to war. But secondly, if there's increased tensions, it dampens both bilateral bilateral cooperation between the US and Russia because there can't be more spheres of influence or buffer areas. This is bad because it will cause war between Russia. Russia is going to view a NATO as attacking, meaning that they're going to use their policy of escalating to de-escalate, which causes a nuclear war, which is causing apocalyptic destruction. At that point, let's go to their responses. Their first response is that tensions are increasing right now because Russia and China are doing ex exercise together. Remember what Conrad explains in the rebuttal. This does not matter. Uniqueness controls the direction of the link. You don't see any war right now. You haven't seen an invasion. They don't prove why just two countries doing exercises together leads to war. The two aren't correlated at all. We do exercises with other countries all the time. Just because we do exercises doesn't mean there's tensions when you're literally seeing tensions decrease right now. But then the second response they make is that there's no bargaining chip. That's not true. They're economic sanctions. A, these have worked before because it increased, decreased the Russian economy by 9%. And B, Russia didn't aggress after Ukraine. Probability is on our side. But at that point, they extend the technocrats' turn. Again, uniqueness controls the direction of the link. Putin is consolidating power right now. His popularity is going up. There's no reason why they replace. If anything, more aggression is going to make these technocrats even more powerful and more persuasive. At that point, they say that nuclear war doesn't cause extinction. That's not true. The warrant from Star is very simple. It causes radiation because there's toxic gases released into the air. Even if that gets washed away in the long term, in the short term, it kills people because all the sun is blocked out. Even if there's remote island populations, there still affected by sunlight and toxic gases that go everywhere on the globe. At that point, we are a prerequisite to all of their arguments because more multipolar cooperation means that we can actually solve for climate change better, meaning that we're actually accessing their impact better than they do. For those reasons, we're very, very proud to take it. Are we doing Grand Cross? Yeah, Grand Cross. Um, can, do you want to ask first question or can I ask first question? You can ask first question. All right. So let's start with the let's start with your China argument. So can you just briefly go over the argument? 
it's that China will cause global emissions to increase and that China will rise if we don't have allies. Is that no, the- that's not the argument. The argument is saying that she right now is playing on the fact that alliance commitments are low, right? Which was the con evidence that was extended. Okay. Um, that, yeah, this causes Xi to be able to consolidate power within China and become like the next Mao. That's bad because he quashes economic liberalization. Like empirically, he's going to like leave the WTO, ETC, ETC. When that occurs, right, that speeds that all the progress climate China has been doing on climate change just gets decimated. And climate change, please. Okay, so then what is any of the WTO is, like, argument extended that, in the summary? So, so I, China stops progress. So then what evidence do you read that says that China is the linchpin to global climate change efforts? What evidence? I mean, I think that analysis should have probably been made like earlier in the round. Uh, if you made the response, we would have came up and read the Connolly out. It says China is the linchpin, right? But that response was made around, so we didn't. Okay, so then I'll also ask the question: In a world in which China, uh, in a multipolar system in which China will rise inevitably, how does that, I guess, not like why does the consolidation of power? Sure. Uh, it's what I said in summary, right? It's exactly the analysis you did. There's a hard transition. There's a soft transition. If uh, if she rather consolidates power and becomes like the next Mao, no matter what the consult, it's going to be hard, right? That's the uh, what evidence is it? Like, I think it's like Frederick evidence, right? In a world where because she does not consolidate power, the, it will be like a peaceful transition where there's no multipolar wars, etc., etc., which is why this argument is a fundamental prerequisite. The last question about the the link evidence, Red. Um, so we made a, a no link response that said that why do Asian allies like Japan and South Korea why do they care about the Baltic states? Name um, this the one AC card, maybe the 1AC card that indicates that these allies that China is trying to undermine care about what the US that's does. That's not the argument, right? The argument isn't that China is trying to undermine Asian allies. It's a, simply a perception argument to the Chinese public. Right? What allies are you talking about? It's, it's just China internally. It's a China politics to side. You say that she is trying to consolidate power amongst his allies? No. She is trying to consolidate power inside of China to become the next Mao, right? Like China right now is having a bunch of like POEs coming in. China is trying to be like, no. Can I have a question though? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk about, you know, just the idea of multipolarity. If there's hardliners in governments that want to be going for great power ambitions that have control of the government, that's probably going to lead to like more great power wars, right? No, because our argument is that even if there's independent hard hardliners, the fact that there's multiple countries that have relatively the same amount of power and there's not one country that has a dominant amount of power would less would result in less war is the argument. Also, also, also Shrieker, even if there are independent hardliners, given that Russia has a position of being a defensive realist, the only way you That's empower the problem, those right? hardliners is by being more aggressive against yeah, Russia. Pages, the problem is we agree, right? Russia, if liberal technocrats control the government, they will be a defensive realist. But if their yeah. government and Putin's inner circle are taken over by the CIA, I don't know how to pronounce it. That only that's happens if you that's affirm. Time, the only risk of that happening is if you affirm. You're, you're, no, you're we're right. saying they're taken over right now, but that's that's time. All right. Okay. Um. All righty, everyone. It's gonna go the underview about like nuke war and all that fun good stuff. Um, and then it's going to go to the terms on their case. Does that sound good with everyone? And I guess like if I have time, but I probably won't, I'll go back to China, but like I probably won't. All right, everyone good and fun and chill with that order. They extend the SAR evidence, the site evidence, which is extended by Trigger and literally every single speech specifically indicates the SAR evidence and it gives two reasons as to why you should not buy it. Firstly, because it concludes that the clouds that they cover, uh, cover uh, talk about are literally never going to be able to fully cover the sun, which means the temperature never gets cold enough to not be able to go, uh, grow crops. And secondly, concludes that there are like things like plateau populations that are not going to be affected by the radiation that they talk about, which means that in no world does new war cause an extinction. The site evidence is literally an indict to STAR and goes through several reasons why STAR is complete BS, you should not be buying it. The one way we actually get to extinction in this round is through climate change because they've conceded literally all of the 
warranting that climate change leads to extinction because literally everyone melts and it is too hot to grow crops is literally like already happening where I live. Like it's 90 degrees outside, corn can't grow in this type of weather. Go to the turns on their case. They have pretty much straight up conceded liberal technocrats. That turn is that right now hardliners seeking control of the government. He's Putin she showed that he is aggressing in the Baltics. However, when NATO pushes back by forming a new send troops to the Baltics, that means that the hardliners lose power because they no longer have like stuff to brag about the Baltics and liberal technocrats take control of the government. All of that warranting is straight up conceded. That's critical because when liberal technocrats take over the government state, actually do good climate policy, which solves for climate change, which is really important because like Russia's a giant country, they're like the third biggest emitter of climate emissions. That's really good for climate change. Um, that's conceded. So it outweighs on probability and they conceded all of the weighing as to why you should uh, evaluate probability of links into, new, into climate change first. The other turn they conceded, even if you are buying that nuclear happens, is the diplomacy turn. They just say that like one unique piece controls the election, the direction of the link. Sure, I agree with that, but they've conceded that the most recent piece of evidence in this entire round is the O'Connor evidence, which finds that Russia is aggressing on the Western border right now. They say that this doesn't necessarily equal that they're going to invade, but they drop the Mueller evidence, which finds there's a political incentive to invade right now, which means like, sure, they're going to invade tomorrow. They're not invading today. The only response is that like sanctions work, but like, no, that's not true. They're aggressing now. At that point, extend the diplomacy turn, which is when you drew in the Baltics who actually have a bargaining chip to remove to actually do negotiations with Russia, which is what we say is the most probable link to preventing new war for any extinction scenario, you are always voting out. All right, we'll start time. The order is going to be the impact line and then the negative case. All right. Extend the warrants from the star evidence as to why nuclear war is the most important impact in the round, specifically that it causes radiation and results in the sun blocking out. They make the response that their evidence answers our argument, but here's the, the differential. We made a response in the last speech that the impact of nuclear war is an impact turn to climate change, that nuclear war independently exacerbates the effect of climate change. Even if there's like a few people left, they don't prove that that resolves climate change. They don't prove that climate change is like, would be resolved in a world in which nuclear war happens, which proves that we are a link into their argument, but also independently, you would kill millions of people. They say magnitude is what matters, but they don't prove, like they still, even if it doesn't cover the incomplete entirety of the sun, it would still kill billions and billions of people, which proves our magnitude outweighs any sort of differential. On, the, on our case, they make one turn that says liberal technocrats have control now when they would lose stat control in a world of the affirmative. They have dropped the argument that Russia is a defensive realist, which means that Putin will never lose control of power because he specifically wants power and the ability to project power and defend the Russian uh, state from spheres of influence. This answered their spheres of influence or their liberal technocrats argument because it proves that they're never going to be able to take power. Also, our case is a link turn to their argument. Our, uh, our link evidence indicates that in a world in which there is uh, an increase in defense commitments into the Baltic region, it prevents cooperation with Russia, which means that even if they think that their argument is true, that there would be some kind of cooperation that might uh, happen, we would say that there would be more cooperation happening in the status quo because we allow for cooperation. However, in a world in which there would be no cooperation, it would also show that you would not be able to resolve for the impacts of climate change. At the end of the day, they've not responded to the fact that, that we're in a multipolar system and that it's a question of whether we are going to have a hard transition or a soft transition. Our argument is, that, is simple, is we are transitioning towards a soft transition in the status quo that will resolve climate change. They have not once responded to that analysis too, that multipolarity resolves climate change. And they've also conceded that that is inevitable, which means is that the only differential is the immediate impact of encircling Russia, which our evidence indicates would cause immediate war as Russia is a defensive realist that doesn't like that they view uh, the Baltics as a buffer zone to the West, which means that they will attack immediately as soon as you affirm. For that reason, I strongly urge vote for the negative. All right, fun around, y'all.